Well, good morning, everyone, and wow, it's just uh, great to be back here in the Sioux. I want to thank Dave and the amazing team at Rector Machine Works. You guys are champions. Thank you for uh, loaning us this site. You know, I've, I've spent a lot of time up here over the last little while, and I was up here just a few weeks ago announcing a game-changing investment in Algoma Steel, and we're investing in the future of clean steel to make sure the Sioux continues to benefit from the industry for decades to come. And I have to say, you're in good hands with Ross. Where, where are you, Ross? There you are, okay. <laughs> you're in good hands with Ross. He's been a tireless advocate for this community. And I know this is a city that respects a fighter, and there's no greater fighter than Ross Romano. Ross has accomplished so much for this community, but he knows and I know that we're just getting started. Together, we're tackling the hardest problems and delivering real solutions. And that means saying yes to building highways and key infrastructure here in Northern Ontario. In 2021 alone, we put $641 million into expanding and repairing Northern highways. These are desperately needed investments that will mean better roads and almost 4,500 jobs here in the north. And most importantly, we're building that road to the ring of fire. We're working side by side with Indigenous communities in true partnership and investing a billion dollars to build an all-season road to the ring of fire. This road will be an absolute game changer. It will be a corridor to prosperity that will connect communities, families, and businesses throughout the North. It will help create thousands of new mining jobs and bring countless benefits and opportunities for Indigenous communities, including easier access to everyday goods that most of us take for granted, like groceries, fuel, health care, and water. And, oh, and we will benefit, many, many will benefit from unlocking the ring of fire will be an enormous, enormous for the, the North. Everyone in Ontario has a stake in its success. That's because the minerals of the ring of fire will make Ontario a resource powerhouse. And as we work towards being the North American leaders in electric vehicle production, as we build new EV battery facilities and secure massive new investments from the auto companies, these resources have never been more important. I want the minerals extracted here in the North, the clean steel produced here at Algoma, to be a critical part of the EV supply chain we're building right here in Ontario. And we can only do this by all working together. I was so proud to sit down recently with the chiefs from Martin Falls and Webaquay First Nations. Together we announced they'll be co-leading the planning of the Northern Road Link as part of a historic partnership with the province. This progress builds on the progress we already made. Last year we approved terms of reference for two other critical sections of the road to the Ring of Fire. Today, we are in the late stages of the environmental assessments and design work on the first two sections of the road. These are the final steps before shovels finally get in the ground. The most important part that we've done is hand in, working hand in hand with our partners. And this collaboration is what's been missing. It's the only way to get a project this ambitious done because we're saying yes to building the road to the Ring of Fire, we're saying yes to more jobs for Northern Ontario, and we're saying yes to finally getting it done. And I just need to remind everyone here in the Sioux that Kathleen Wynne and Stephen Del Duca, they had their chance. They started talking about building this road in 2011. That's over a decade ago. But year after year, budget after budget, election after election, that's all they did. They talked, they reviewed, they debated, they delayed. Nothing got built, nothing got done. And in the NDP, well, Andrew Horvath is opposed to building anything. The NDP are happier protesting a road than building one. Well, they say no, we're saying yes. 
Yes to thousands of new mining jobs. Yes to connecting northern communities with high-speed internet. Yes to bringing affordable natural gas to more homes in the north. And yes to building safer highways for northern communities. And yes to building the road to the ring of fire. I want to take a moment to talk directly to the people of northern Ontario. I want you to feel the same sense of optimism, the same hope that every other person in Ontario was feeling. I want you to see a future for here in Northern Ontario, because, make no mistake, Ontario's best days are still ahead. Northern Ontario's best days are still ahead. But it's up to us, it's up to each and every one of us to roll up our sleeves, to get to work, and get it done. This is a choice we face on June the 2nd. It's a very clear choice. If you want excuses, if you want more delays and more empty talk, well, you've got a lot of options in this election. But if you want to get it done, you have one choice. Friends, we have the team, we have the vision, and we have the plan. So on June the 2nd, everybody, let's do it and let's get it done. Thank you and God bless the people of Ontario. Thank you. Thanks. We'll, we'll take questions at the mic now. Just a reminder, it's one question and one follow-up. Hi. Hi there, Mr. Ford. Elaine Delamatia, Sue Hi, Star. Elaine. You spent a lot of time the last few days talking about transportation issues, whether they be roads, subways, transits. Uh, you've previously announced the um, uh, funding for the Northlander yes, uh, train. Um, that covers most of southern Ontario and part of northern Ontario, but not this part of northern Ontario. What are you going to do for, to return rail services that has been shut down since 2012 here from Sault Ste. Marie to Hearst and help passengers get back to their camps, their remote areas, their tourism areas for this part of northern Ontario? Well, thanks for the question. Uh, as I was just mentioning, we, we invested over $641 million right across the north. And with the, the Northlander, that's just one step that we're moving forward that the previous government, they cut off the Northlander, they closed it down, they cut off access to uh, people in the, in the north. Uh, we're getting it done. They, they talk a good story, but we're actually doing it. So we're going to continue investing in the north, investing into roads and saying yes to infrastructure right across the north. And uh, we just can't wait to get those uh, shovels in the ground after the two uh, EAs are done. What, what this does, it brings opportunity to people that might otherwise not ever have that opportunity. As simple as getting health care when we build this road, getting proper groceries and water and, and high-speed internet, this is going to be game-changing. It's going to change their lives. Follow-up question. Yes. Uh, you talk about Northern Ontario and the future of Northern Ontario. How about the affordability issue? Housing in Sault Ste. Marie has gone up tremendously in the last couple of years. There's not enough new houses being built, yeah. and um, there's not enough housing for people to move to Sault Ste. Marie to fill those skilled work skilled jobs that, that are out there and available right now. What will you do to, to help municipalities grow their communities? Well, we're going to produce uh, 1.5 million new homes right across Ontario over the next 10 years. We're going to cut the red tape and regula regulations. We're working collaboratively with 444 min municipalities. And it comes down to one thing, supply and demand. Uh, when, when developers go there and they're asking for a permit, it can't take three to four years to get a permit. We need it instantly, and we're working uh, very, very well with the, with the uh, 444 municipalities. Our task force sent out great recommendations, and we're going to standardize the process. You can't have one process in, in Toronto, another process in the Sioux, and another process in, in Kenora. We need standardization across uh, Ontario, and that's exactly what we're going to deliver. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Premier. It's uh, Craig Huckerby from On TV, Hi, Sue Online. Uh, for decades and decades, uh, we had to wait for Highway 17 East to be four-laned. And even now, it's only a small section of that highway yeah. is four-laned. Our attention now is on Highway 17 North, where there's been numerous accidents and deaths yeah. over the last few years. Is your government even looking at four-laning Highway 17 North? And if so, are we going to see it in our lifetime? Yeah, that's a great question. I get that asked all the time, and yes, that's part of our infrastructure plan is to continue making the roads in the north safe. And you know, you mentioned a, a, a good question there. 
other people around Ontario, if you aren't up in the north and you aren't driving late at night on those roads, you don't get it. I've been on those roads at, at night time, and we're going to make sure that we do everything we can to invest into the infrastructure, into the roads, to make it safe for the communities right across the north. So the answer is yes. We're going to be uh, looking at that and investing uh, in that, and we're going to get the shovels in the ground as soon as, as, soon as possible. Uh, one follow-up question. Uh, the previous Liberal government had a pilot project launched uh, for basic income. Your government came in and stopped that. Are you looking at reinstating that or replacing it with something uh, similar? Well, you know something, what I believe in, in making sure people have an opportunity to get a, a better job and a bigger paycheck. And that's exactly what we're doing. When, when I took over um, as, as Premier, this province lost 300,000 jobs under the Liberals and NDP. As we stand today, I got a report yesterday, there's 550,000 more people working in Ontario than there were four years ago. And there's 338,000 more jobs available. And some of the ways we're, we're creating the jobs and creating the environment and the climate for companies to come here is one example is the electric vehicle production. We're starting in the, in the north in the critical minerals, creating thousands of jobs. And the critical minerals in the north are going to flow through the supply chain down to the, the battery uh, plants in southern, uh, southwestern Ontario and right across the whole supply chain of the automotive sector. So everyone is playing a key part in it and we can't take one piece of the puzzle out. And then we have Algoma. Uh, we, we've secured with the support ourselves and the federal government for jobs for years to come. And that gives people certainty in, in the Sioux here, that we're, we're investing hundreds of millions of dollars with the federal government to produce clean steel. So we have the critical mineral strategy, producing clean steel, being manufactured into the car plants and the battery plants that will be the number one electric vehicle manufacturer in North America. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Ford. Hi. I'm Nusheen Ziafati with the Canadian Press. Hi. Um, you promised in the last election to lower people's hydro bills by 12% and that didn't happen. The FAO said people's bills are lower than they would have been under the Liberal plan but are still higher today than they were in 2018. Is there anything more you would, would or could do to lower them further? Would you follow through on your 2018 promise to return the Hydro One dividend to ratepayers? Yeah, well, great question. We actually lowered it, especially for large manufacturers, 15 to 17 percent right now. When I was speaking to the, the experts in the energy sector, per se, they said if you weren't in office, everyone's prices would be up 20%. So we're going to make sure that we continue to drive efficiencies, create more electricity, cost-effective electricity. And that's one of the reasons why the economy is booming right now is because we made it competitive with other jurisdictions in North America. We're, we're at one time under the Liberals and NDP, uh, the prices were out of control. And when we talked to the automotive companies, they said they were leaving because the out of control electricity costs. Now, since we've dropped it anywhere from 15 to 17 percent, they're coming back and they're opening up. And when it comes to the auto sector, because the whole supply chain is tied in, you remember Stellantis, which was the Chrysler plant, they were leaving, they were gone, both in, in Brampton and they were going in Windsor, Oshawa, GM left. We had Ford Motor Company looking to go down to Mexico, move forward four years. We have a thriving and booming industry uh, in the auto sector, now the critical mineral uh, uh, regions of, of this province. So I'm, I'm excited. The province is going in the right direction. The difference is the other parties talk, talk, talk for 15 years, do nothing. We're getting it done. When the pandemic hit, your government paused its plan to amalgamate and condense the number of public health units. Now that the pandemic is hopefully winding down, will you be proceeding with that? Well, I always take my advice off the chief medical officer, Dr. Moore. I call him the commander in chief when it comes to that. And I'll take his advice, which I have right from day one. And I, I just want to give him a, a big shout out. And, and the former chief medical officer, Dr. Williams, they worked their backs off. But I take my advice off the chief medical officer on that uh, area. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thanks, everyone. Thank you so much.